Hi, Dave with Align the Therapy here. We're going to talk about using a scoliometer. A scoliometer measures the, the rotation in the spine. It doesn't measure the scoliosis angle, the Cobb angle of the, of the curve, but I want to show you how to use a scoliometer because it's a useful tool to monitor for progression of the curve and it's a, a nice way to diagnose scoliosis as well. So a little close-up view here of the scoliometer. We, this is a baseline scoliometer. It has a little ball in there that rotates back and forth as we tip it. And then it has a little notch here for the spine, the spinous process to go right there. And then whatever degree it goes to when we put it on, on the back, that's the number that, that we, we go for the maximum angle. So that is a scoliometer. So come on over here. When, when I do a scoliometer measurement on a patient, I usually have them sitting. And that's the standard way that I, I will measure a scoliometer reading. Uh, the reason for that is it takes the legs out of the equation. So we're not, we're not measuring this with a leg length difference. So it makes it standardized. So Sammy here has agreed to help us out with showing a, a scoliometer uh, and some, some videos. And so go ahead and lean forward there, Sammy. So she's going to lean forward. And we're going to see uh, on Sammy, we can see her spinous process very easily. So as we look down through here, we're going to put that notch right in the middle of uh, over the spinous process. And then we're going to keep both hands on the scoliometer. That's going to be important. As we bring it down, we're going to go for the maximal reading on the scoliometer. So we're about eight degrees there. And then it starts to go back. And then we'll come down into the lumbar spine. Remember both hands on the scoliometer. So we might get two or three degrees through here. One thing to note, don't go too far this way because then it won't be an accurate reading. We want to keep it upright and vertical, both hands on the scoliometer, taking the highest reading. Okay, so go ahead and come up, Sammy. So that's how we do it in sitting. Make sure you go all the way down the spine. So we go from the, the upper thoracic, lower cervical spine, all the way down through to the lumbar spine and down to the sacrum. So now, Sammy, go ahead and stand up. Sammy's very flexible, so I want her to bend forward and touch her toes. That's really far. Come back up a little bit. Um, and turn this way so we can turn to your right. A little more. There we go. So we want to round the back to maximize the rotation. So she can kind of keep her back flat and keep going forward, but that's not what we're looking for. That's coming from her hips. So come back up, round the back a little bit, kind of like an angry cat. And then we're going to follow that same thing, following the spinous process. Looks like we're about the same, eight, nine degrees. We're going to come down one or two degrees in the lumbar. So you can see if you bring the camera down a little bit, we look this way, we can see there's a raised right side in the thoracic and the left side is lower than the right side. That's because her curve goes to the right and that's why this is raised up. Come on back up. If you see a difference between sitting and standing, it could be how they're standing, but it could also be that they have a leg length difference. So if we had a leg length difference, let's try this, Sammy. Let's put this under one leg. I don't really care which leg it is. And go ahead and touch your toes again. Come back up a little bit. So let's see if this changes it. If we look here, I mean, now we're at 13, 14, we're much higher on the scoliometer reading because this is mimicking her right leg being longer than the left leg. So you have to be careful if you're just doing scoliometer readings in standing and they go into that position and you're seeing a positive finding on the scoliometer, you may want to look if they have a leg length difference because it can definitely influence the rotation in the spine. A positive scoliometer reading I use over five degrees. Sometimes you'll see the instructions for these that they, they say over seven degrees. I've seen some big curves at seven degrees, so I usually use five degrees uh, to catch those smaller curves. And once you know what you're looking for, you can tell if someone has scoliosis. And then 
we're using this to confirm that and also to monitor for progression. So with my patients, I'll measure this uh, multiple times. Sammy, I've probably measured this how many times on you? A lot. A lot of times, and we use that to monitor for changes. So hopefully this was useful in teaching you how to use a scoliometer. You probably don't have one at home. There are apps on the phone and you can get things that they can measure with, with the phone. Uh, you don't have to do that. This might be more for providers that are using scoliometers in the clinic. But make sure you're using it correctly, that it's repeatable, and that you know if you're looking at a leg length difference. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.